Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing My Tooth, Your Love, Episode 2 of the Taiwanese BL Drama Series. This series is available on Vicky Rakuten if you want to go check it out. It also has subtitles in multiple languages. So, Episode 2. <clears throat> in Episode 2 of this drama, the main character is still having tooth issues and he's gone home to rest and his sister calls the dentist and says you know senior we were friends in college i really would like it if you could please go check on my brother because he's not picking up my calls and i'm worried that he could have hurt himself because of his tooth or maybe had a reaction to the medication something and the dentist is like I really don't want to go check up on your kid brother. No offense. It's just not like my burning desire of the evening is to go check up on somebody else. But anyway, he finally is talked into going and checking up on the kid brother. And he goes to the apartment. And he's like, I can't even get in. He's not opening the door. She says, well, can you, can you try to get in? So somebody else comes out. He comes in through the locked door main entry door he gets up to the apartment and he's looking for the key on the ledge and in the post box she says it's in the electrical panel and he's like you put it where it's so obvious she said well you didn't think to look in the electrical panel so obviously it works so anyway he finally gets in to the area that the main part of the house which it's a really cool house i mean no offense i'm liking i love the layout of the houses in dramas so I'm like, the, the house is really cool. He walks in, kind of looks around. There's nobody in the main part of the house. So he then goes to the kid brother's bedroom. That's being very noisy right now. But anyway, why it's noisy? Okay, so he walks in and the kid brother is literally covered with tons of these stuffed animals. And he also has earplugs in his head. So... The doctor removes some of the stuffed animals, makes sure that he's breathing, puts the stuffed animals back, trips over some stuff, his earbud falls out, and he leaves the apartment. Well, the next morning, kid brother wakes up, and he's like, someone was in the apartment. There is an earbud of questionable origin on the floor of my bedroom. So he's, he's going around the house, and it's so funny because I'm like, I don't mean it bad, and I don't like Adam Sandler as an actor, so don't get me wrong, I'm not an Adam Sandler fan. I totally get some people really enjoy his work, but it's not my kind of humor. But there's something about this actor that reminds me of Adam Sandler in Asian form. So he's running about his house, trying to figure out who had the erroneous, questionable earbud. And he calls his sister, I think, in this show. I'm not sure, but I think so. And um, she says, well, I had so-and-so check on you. Well, then he makes so-and-so a beautiful little bento box of seafood and rice with nice little treats and all these little things. And he puts in a nice little lunch box and he takes it to the dental office and he says, to thank you for checking on me, this is a bento box for you. And what he doesn't realize is I think there's some kind of trigger in the bento box for this dentist because I think their significant other at one time was a good cook and it's hard for them to take food that's good because it reminds them of that person. So the doctor's very like, I don't want the bento box, go away. And the kid brother's like, you know, I'm trying to show my gratitude because you didn't have to come check on me for my sister. So will you please take the bento box? Can you please work on accepting gratitude because it's a good thing to work on? And he leaves the bento box and he walks out. And so you have this whole um, issue with the, with the doctor sitting there and he really is kind of I would say he's a lot like in I Do Be Loved in House with Jin Yu Zin. When you see Jin Yu Zin panic or get upset and you're sitting there going, it makes no sense why Jin Yu Zin is acting this way on the surface. But if you knew their past history, it makes perfect sense. It's like I was um, talking with one of my students here yesterday, actually, about things. And they were like, you know, why is it that people can't get away from addictions or can't quit bad habits, as the Sean song says? I don't think it's so much a case of not knowing that something is bad. I think, you know, everybody knows that like smoking excessively or drinking excessively is not going to be good for their health. But I said, 
it's not so much that they don't know that fact, it's the fact that they don't realize that it can be good without that substance in their life. It's that they sit there and go, well, maybe I'll be one of the few that isn't affected. And in the same way, I think, you know, why do I say you know so much? I gotta work on that. But anyway, but when someone like the doctor comes out of a really bad relationship, it's hard for him to interact with people even on a basic level in a good way because he's panicking from his past experiences. So when he gets something as seemingly harmless as someone being grateful and giving him a venture box, he panics and comes off as a really atrocious jerk, even though he's not. So I think, you know, don't work on that. The balance here is hard to maintain. Also in this episode, we have, I think it's the other bartender who is played by Alex. Alex, I can't think of his name. Anyway, he's a musician, a fabulous musician. He does the song for this series. I think it's Alex Chu. But anyway, Alex Chu plays his character and he's at the bar and he's serving people, getting things around. And there's this young younger kid sitting there, and I don't mean about it, he's 19, but he's still a kid. So anyway, he's sitting there at the, at the benches with his two parents for his birthday dinner. I think his birthday dinner was a pre-birthday dinner. Anyway, he's sitting here with his parents for dinner, and his parents are like, well, we always support you. We always do everything to make you happy. And he's like, um, since when? Because I don't feel very supported, and would you support me if I, like, guys? And he gets up and kisses the poor waiter who is sitting there going, I don't know this kid. I've never met this kid. His parents are right here. I'm sorry, but I have nothing to do with this whole situation. I just happen to be bringing beverages and food. And so Alex, whose character is sitting there going, this kid is annoying me to no end, and I know he used me to get back at his parents, but this still is not an appropriate thing. So he he backs off from the table, the kid sets back down, the parents, um, the, the dad just rushes off in a huff, the mom follows the dad, and the kid then leaves after that. It's, it's just a mess. And the kid also brings a bunch of uh, glasses in the bar too, so it's, it's a lovely mess that's happened. So you have this whole issue at the bar, and during that time, you find out that the parents have basically kicked their son out because of this one issue, which I'm going, I don't mean it weird. Maybe I'm just different, but I'm going, this is not a kick out of all offense. This is something where you need to sit there and go, why was the kid so pent up and so mad that they acted this erratically? Because I don't think most people do this kind of behavior just for kicks. It's because something's happened that has triggered them and maybe built up over time and now they react and the parents are saying they're going, what happened? And it's like, well, maybe you should have thought about that six months ago. But anyway, so the kid is sitting outside the back door of the restaurant with a big bruise on his face. And um, that's when the owner, who has the toothache of the bar, comes in and he's like, what's, what's this kid doing outside? He's like, he puts his bike up, he sees the kid, he doesn't go to the kid. And I think in some ways that makes sense because I'm going, you don't know who the kid is, you don't know what the situation is. It'd be much better to go in and find out from the people inside maybe why there's a kid sitting on the stoop with a big red brood on their face. So anyway, that's where this episode ends. I am liking the series. It is a little too, I don't know what the word is, maybe a little hokey and a little cringy in parts, but I still like it because the characters are interesting and the sets are really cool. I mean, the apartment that the bar owner lives in is absolutely fantastic. I'm just saying. So anyway, that is my review of My Tooth, Your Love, Episode 2. Again, you can get this on Vicky Rukatan. I would highly recommend it. It is not as good as Plus and Minus, and it is not as good as I Do Beloved in House. But it is still a neat show. I think if I was going to rank them, I would put We Best Love at the top of the Taiwanese BL Parthenon, and then I would put Plus and Minus, and then I Do Beloved in House, and then this one. So it's like fourth in rank, but it's still very good. But that's my review of My Tooth, Your Love, Episode 2. Check it at the round table. Bye!